I now call the July 17th meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission to order. Please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Comments of public interest. This portion of the meeting is to allow up to three minutes per speaker with 30 total minutes on items of interest or concern and not on items that are on the current agenda. The Planning and Zoning Commission may not discuss these items but may respond with factual or policy information. The Planning and Zoning Commission may choose to place the item on a future agenda. The presiding officer may modify these times as deemed necessary. Thank you. Do we have any speakers on this item? No, we do not. Thank you. Move to consent, please. Consent agenda. The consent agenda will be acted upon in one motion and contains items which are routine and typically non-controversial. Items may be removed from this agenda for individual consideration by commissioners or staff. Thank you. Good evening, Commission. Um, we just wanted to mention we have a few items on this plan that need to be clarified. So, uh, excuse me, agenda item E on your consent agenda uh, needs a little clarification. So staff requests that you uh, withdraw that item tonight. We'll bring it back at a future meeting. Very well. So we will have a motion, please, to approve consent with the exception of item E. I'll second that. Yeah, who's making the motion? Oh, I thought you made the motion. I said I will accept the motion, okay. so that's fine. We'll, we'll will call Commissioner Carey is uh, <clears throat> moved to approve the consent agenda with the exception of item E with a second by Commissioner Brunoff. Do we dare risk this? Okay, Mr. Lyle, what is your vote? Commissioner Lyle. Approved. Thank you. So we have uh, we have a, a vote of six to zero to approve the consent agenda. Please note that we have Mr. Lyle, Commissioner Lyle, joining us uh, virtually, and we are short Commissioner Bronski and Commissioner Tong. <clears throat> items for individual consideration, public hearing items. Unless instructed otherwise by the chair, speakers will be called upon in the order registrations are received. Applicants are limited to a total of 15 minutes of presentation time with a five minute rebuttal if needed. Remaining speakers are limited to 30 total minutes of testimony time with three minutes assigned per speaker. The presiding officer may modify these times as deemed necessary. Administrative consideration items must be approved if they meet city development regulations. Legislative consideration items are more discretionary except as constrained by legal considerations. Agenda item 1A, discussion and action. Request to repeal in its entirety ordinance number 2009-6-10, thereby rescinding the thoroughfare standards rules and regulations together with all amendments thereto and adopting the street design standards. Applicant is City of Plano. Evening Commission, Mike Bell, Conference of Planning Manager. Staff Lee requesting to table items 1A, 1B, 1C, and 1D to the August 21st, 2023 meeting. Happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Okay, uh, any questions for staff on items 1A, B, C? Chairman. Yes, sir, Mr. Law. 
Uh, I need to recuse myself from the thoroughfare standards portion of the meeting. Thank you. Does he need to turn off his camera too or just the? Um, yeah, it would be best to turn off the camera, leave the Zoom meeting altogether and then rejoin. Thank mm -hmm. you. Excellent, okay. So um, do we have questions for staff on this? It's a public hearing item. I still wanna open the public hearing, but do we have questions for staff on the table? Just one more of a curiosity more than anything. The video on the planocomplan.org slash streets, which I found very informative, is do we notify the public that that kind of information is on our website or is it just lock of the draw? Who oh, yes, we've had Facebook posts. We've had social media um, email blasts, all sorts of, of communication directing them to that website. Okay. Mr. Ratliff. Thank you, Chairman. Um, just one generic question, and you may be going to provide more information. I think, at least in my neighborhood, a lot of the discussion is about some of the recommendations for downtown. And I, I know that there, you've probably gotten a lot of feedback on that. Are we going to get a briefing between now and the 21st about any revisions or any feedback or any um, uh, kind of reaction or commentary on some of the concerns of the downtown community? Uh, staff is prepared to provide that briefing on August 21st. We could provide it earlier if, if needed. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for staff? Okay. I'll open the public hearing. Do we have any speakers on the, on item 1A, B, C, or D? No, we do not. Okay, I'll close the public hearing. Just to clarify, can we make one motion to cover all four of these items for tabling purposes? Yes. Would, you, uh, would, would it please the chair for me to reach, read each one so you know what you're voting on or just do it as a whole? I think they're all related to thoroughfare plan. Yes. I, I think that's sufficient enough. They'll all be brought back the same way in the future. If they were going to be pulled apart, then I would have a more concern. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Rowe. I make a motion we postpone items 1A, 1B, 1C, and 1D to the August 21st meeting. Table. I table it until the August 21st meeting. Excuse second. me. All right. So we have a motion by Commissioner Ratliff with a second by Commissioner Ollie to table items 1A, 1B, 1C, and 1D to the August 21st meeting. Please vote. And that item carries five to zero. <clears throat> Is Mr. Law going to rejoin? Stop Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Item 2A. Agenda item number 2A, public hearing zoning case 2023-003. Request to rezone 99.0 acres located at the southeast corner of Legacy Drive and Parkwood Boulevard from commercial employment to planned development commercial employment. Zone commercial employment. Petitioner is EDS Legacy Partners, LLC. This is for legislative consideration. Good evening, everybody. My name is Katja Copeland, and I'm a senior planner with the planning department. This request is to rezone the subject property from commercial employment to planned development commercial employment for mid-rise residential and modified various development standards to create a mixed-use office campus. The surrounding zoning is commercial employment to the north, east, and south, and developed with professional slash general administrative offices. To the west is zoned planned development 65 Central Business District 1 and is developed with multifamily residences, single family residence attached lots, a bank and restaurant uses. The subject property is highlighted in yellow on the screen. This is the old headquarters for the electronic data systems, also known as EDS. The aerial shows the primary building in the center of the property extending east with parking garages to the north and south surrounded by open space. Shown on the screen is the companion preliminary site plan. For this discussion, a color has been assigned with the land use associated with it. The red color is the hotel and parking garage. 
The yellow is mid-rise residential and the parking garages. The light green is the open space. The dark green is the proposed detention pond. The blue is the professional slash general administrative offices, helipad and parking. And finally, the purple color is the moderate intensity manufacturing and parking garages. On the screen is the northern portion of the PSP that fronts Legacy Drive and Parkwood Boulevard. Both of these streets are classified as a type C thoroughfare on the thoroughfare plan map. Now we see the middle portion of the property that fronts Parkwood Boulevard. And now on the screen is the southern portion of the property that fronts Parkwood Boulevard and Tennyson Parkway. Tennyson Parkway is also classified as a type C, type C thoroughfare. The subject property is designated employment center on the future land use map. Taken as a whole, the proposed development is inconsistent with the EM dashboard. The eastern and central portions of the site as highlighted in blue on the right side of the screen include corporate office campus, research facilities, and manufacturing, which are consistent with the EM dashboard. The western portion highlighted in yellow on the screen includes a higher intensity mixed use form that is not consistent with the EM description. As stated, residential uses are not appropriate within the EM category. A higher intensity mixed use form is more consistent with the Urban Activity Center. Legacy Town Center development is located directly across from Parkwood Boulevard to the west and is designated as UA. Should the Planning and Zoning Commission find the mixed use aspects appropriate in this instant due to proximity of the Legacy Town Center, it may be helpful to analyze the western portion of the site regarding consistency with the UA dashboard. Looking at it from the Employment Center perspective solely, the request meets some of the comprehensive plan policies, but not all of them. This request is disfavored due to the lack of conformity with the RGM-1. This request does not conform to the EM land use, housing mix, and density recommendations. Recommendation for approval should be carefully deliberated and justified by findings. The applicant is proposing a master plan with the non-residential and residential uses alongside new and existing buildings and development features. The request provides pedestrian-oriented standards, landscaping, amenities, and public open space. As noted in the plan development stipulations, the applicant is committing to maintaining the historic centerpiece office building. The applicant is proposing in the PD stipulations a maximum of 775 mid-rise residential units in three buildings situated within 250 feet of Parkwood Boulevard. The buildings will encompass a mix of efficiencies, one, two, and three bedroom units with 50% of the units requiring a true balcony or patio with structured parking on the first few floors. A reduced building setback is shown as a part of the development. The PD language specifies that along Parkwood Boulevard, buildings are allowed a minimum setback of 30 feet for any portions of the buildings up to 50 feet. Any portions of building higher than 50 feet will require a minimum 50 foot front yard setback. This reduced setback will create a different aesthetic other than properties within the Legacy Business Park, which maintain a 50 foot front yard setback. The proposed buildings are currently shown at seven stories, much larger than the buildings to the west across Parkwood Boulevard, which are two to four stories in height. The preliminary site plan shows the ability to accommodate the additional 10 feet, and with that, staff recommends increasing the front yard setback along Parkwood to 40 feet. The PSP shows almost 800,000 square feet of the subject property dedicated to moderate intensity manufacturing. This type of use can be impactful to residents and the applicant is proposing to prohibit this use, use within 700 feet of Parkwood. Adding a PD standard allows the existing heliport and helistop to be on the same lot as the mid-rise residential units, noting however that they must be a minimum of 1,000 feet away from these buildings. And staff is supportive of these additional restrictions. 
The phasing stipulations are on the screen and will ensure that the property, the subject <coughs> property, has non-residential uses in addition to open space before the construction of the mid-rise residential and hotel development. Staff supports the phasing standards and believes they are committed to establishing a large non-residential presence on the, on the subject property. An open space plan was submitted with this request. A total of 9.5 acres of open space will be available for residents, employees, and visitors to enjoy when completed. This dedication constitutes to 10.4% of the subject property. And as previously noted, within the phasing section of the PD stipulations, seven acres must be open, uh, open for use before any mid-rise residential is con construction begins. 9.5 acres is a large commitment. However, staff believes there is also a missed opportunity as the two acres of land highlighted in yellow on the screen are not being counted for in this open space plan. The zoning request includes a large residential component, reduced setbacks, and other development allowances. This open space plan shows the area as open space, it's just not being counted for. This portion would increase the open space total to 11.5 acres. If the commission recommends approval of this zoning, staff recommends the remaining area be included in the required open space. Staff is supportive of the additional PD stipulations identifying screening, height, design details of the parking garages. A, a quasi-public street is proposed with pedestrian-oriented elements. The applicant is proposing decorative metal panels to create a unique aesthetic for screening methods focused on the east side of the property. And the development will meet building material requirements as, uh, as noted in Article 23 of the Zoning Ordinance. On the screen in the following six, six pages are all of the plan development stipulations for this case. I'm not going to go through all of the stipulations as many of them have been mentioned in earlier slides, but I will show them all on the screen. This is the first stipulation, <coughs> second and third stipulation, remaining of the third stipulation, fourth stipulation, fifth and sixth, in the final slide. We received two unique responses within the 200 foot buffer, one in support and one in opposition. And we received 37 unique responses, two in support, one neutral and 34 in opposition. We received three duplicate responses and one response outside of the city of Plano for a total of 40 responses. To summarize, the applicant is requesting to rezone the subject property from commercial employment to plan development commercial employment to allow mid-rise residential units and modify various development standards to create a mixed use office campus. This request is disfavored because the proposal lacks conformity with key comprehensive plan policies. There are opportunities to align the zoning language more fully with the associated PSP regarding open space and setbacks. Although this request is disfavored, should the commission choose to support this request, staff recommends consideration of the two remaining issues and how they could benefit future residents, visitors, and employees. This concludes my presentation and I would be happy to answer any questions, noting the applicant is here with a presentation as well. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, do we have questions for staff on the front end of this? Mr. Bruno. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, in reading the materials, I saw a reference to an intent to build a cancer hospital on this site, is that correct? The applicant is here to answer that question, but we do have the moderate intensity manufacturing along with office development and research and development buildings oh. proposed on the PSP. I'm, I'm wondering where the hospital would, would go. Which building is the <clears throat> hospital building? So we don't have a hospital shown on the plan right now. That okay. may be a part of the applicant's proposal, but it's not included in this current preliminary site plan. So that would be a good question for them. 
would it be consistent with the zoning that they're requesting if they decide to build a hospital? Uh, we can confirm that hospital is allowed in that zoning district. Give me just a minute to check that out. Okay. Uh, next question. What is the, uh, wherein is the need for a helipad or a helistop? The helistop is existing and it is on the east side of the property. I mean, is the applicant proposing some use that, that requires helicopters? They are here to answer the questions on uh, how often they may use helicopters and helistops, but currently in our zoning ordinance, we do not allow helipads and helistops within a thousand feet of a lot that pertains residential. And so with this request as one large lot, there would be residential within the same property as a helipad. However, that's why the applicant added that stipulation to note it must be at least a thousand feet away from the residential component of the property, but it's still on the same lot. So we, we needed to add that stipulation in order for the applicant to keep the helipad. So, so you're saying there is an existing helipad now? There is. Okay, and finally, uh, you are suggesting the availability of another 10 feet of setback off of, off of Parkwood, where would that 10 feet come from? What adjustment would they have to make to their site plan in order to generate those extra 10 feet? On the site plan, there is some availability that they could increase that setback, but there would likely be changes that would be necessary okay. to be noted on the PSP. Well, I mean, what, what would they have to, let's say, give up in, in terms of space in order to rededicate space to, the t to an additional 10 feet of setback. So the, the building is almost at that setback right now. There's just, it's just a few feet off. There's one setback that I think is, we have it in, in the report, between 35, 30, 35 feet, and the rest are closer to 40 feet. So okay. they may have to slide the building slightly to the east, but there is room east of the building to move it's it that direction. Space. Okay, yes, sir. without compromising the, the open pedestrian space walkways the or the semi-private yes, road or, or, the, or, the, or, or the trees that they're gonna plant there? That's correct. Okay. I do wanna mention hospital is an allowed use in the commercial employment district. Right. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Kerry. Yeah, just one quick question. Um, there's uh, something referenced in here about challenges with wastewater, and I wonder if you could address those challenges and what Plano might have to do to to resolve those if, in fact, this moves forward? I'd have to get back to you on that. I Let me read the staff report and see what I what we can share with you. Okay. I, I, I think I can, I mean, there's not um, refined information that we have right now. The engineering department will work with the applicant to study the wastewater situation. And if improvements are needed, then that would be when that discussion would be had. So we don't have a study right now that shows the exact wastewater information in your staff report. So uh, we, we don't have information to share it with you at this time. How much risk might that present to this, knowing that we already have some wastewater mm -hmm. challenges within Plano? You know, we've been through that sometimes already with this commission. Do you have an opinion on how significant those challenges might be? I think it's site specific. The applicant's engineer is available to see things, so she may have some information on that. Okay, so great. That Thank you. Commissioner Ralph. Thank you, Chairman. Um, just to summarize what I think I'm reading in your report, correct me if I'm wrong, there are really, in addition to the PD restrictions that you went through and they're in the report, you're saying that two additional, uh, if we're to move forward, that your recommendation is to change from a 30 slash 50 foot setback to just straight 40. And the, also the additional parkland, is there anything else that I missed in there that would be in addition to the um, PD language? Those are the two items that staff is recommending. Okay, so talk me through the 30 then 50 foot setback versus just a 40 straight up. I understand at the street level, the extra 10 feet, but, it, but you said something in your presentation about the 50 foot above 50 feet would provide some additional architectural um, character, I think was the word you used, if I remember right. If we did straight 40, could it be, then be just a flat face building or what, um, what are the guidelines there? Just to clarify, we're not proposing a straight 40 foot. The applicant is requesting a staggered setback, starting at 30, 
and that would be two-story maximum height between 30 and 50 feet, and then a traditional 50-foot setback. We're, we're saying that 30-foot should be 40. Okay, thank you for the clarification, because that wasn't the way I was hearing it, so thank you. Okay, those are my questions, thank you. Commissioner Ali. Uh, just a question on, it's clash with RGM1. Um, can you walk me through that again, uh, just to wrap my head around what, what a, if any, um, mitigation factors could be um, proposed to the applicant, or are there no ways out of it being disfavored with RGM1? Sure, Mr. Bell can discuss the comp plan. So RGM1 speaks to requests that do not comply with mixed uses, height or density are disfavored. The employment center category is very clear that residential uses are not supported. Mm -hmm. The mix of uses allows zero residential. Therefore, any residential proposed on this site would be disfavored by the comprehensive plan and require findings. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Lyle, do you have any questions for staff? I, I do. I just got a question for Eric. If if the zoning that was to the east that I believe stops in the middle of Parkwood was continued, I'm sorry, the zoning to the west that stops in the middle of Parkwood was continued to the east into this site, would the multifamily build out at that point or would the comp plan allow it, I should say? Well, so I think we're talking two different things. So the zoning, to the west is for the, the shops at Legacy. It does allow multifamily uses. So if this property was zoned with the same zoning as that plan development district, multifamily would be an opportunity. Um, I think you mentioned the comp plan. The comprehensive <laughs> plan has a land use designation and that is different on the shops and Legacy property than on this property. So there's the zoning and, and, the, and the land use designation. So one is a zoning district and the other is a conference of plan um, district, if you will. So does that make sense? Am I answering that as you're asking? Okay. It, it does. And, and just to let the commission know what I'm getting at, I don't know if it's a viable um, option, but if I'm just wondering when it makes sense to look at the comp plan and potentially update the comp plan if uh, I, my heart is to not always go against the comp plan. I want to give it proper respect, but at the same time, it's coming up on two years old, and I just wonder if that's something that shouldn't be looked at um, versus making findings against it on a regular basis. Thank you, Mr. Law. Uh, any questions for staff? Other questions specific to the development? Okay, so I don't, I'm not hearing any additional. Commissioner Ratliff, yes. Sorry, thank you. I had another thought. Um, so kind of on the same as Commissioner Lyle's thinking, if you look at the, one of your slides had the blue and the yellow, the same one that's in the report. If you can put that up on the screen. Yep, oh, yeah, keep going. I'm not sure if that, there you go. That's close enough. That one's close enough. Oh. Oh, I think one more. There you go. That's the one I was thinking about. So I guess my, my question, and I'm, I'm not sure who this question is for, Eric, but if, if the frontage of this tract, the first 100 feet or whatever that is, had been shown in the comp plan as UA, would we even be having this discussion? I guess would be my question. Mr. Bell, do you want to? Yes. So... If that were UA, it would meet many of the comp plan recommendations for UA, except I want to point out that it still would not comply with the housing mix, which is part of the mix of uses, because that's based on unit count, not acreage. And so it is already above the percentage that UA, which includes all of Legacy Granite Park, Legacy West, is already above the amount of multifamily types that's recommended for the UA category. So even if this land area was included, it would that would not change, and it would still require findings to approve that case. Okay. I, I wasn't following that in the report, so that helps me. Great. Thank you. 
Okay, um, I have a quick one, and just so that, and I'm sure the applicant will talk to this just a little bit, but from our standpoint, moderate intensity industrial, what kind of range does that cover? I mean, I, will there be, I mean, I think I have an idea what the applicant's gonna propose, but from our point of view, I think a light industrial, like we have over in the you know, RT district and stuff like that, we're dropping, and if you use the word industrial in this area, I'm a little concerned about what that means, and others may as well be, wait a minute, what are we doing over here? If it's you know putting together circuit boards is one thing, if it's... Sure, we have three categories of manufacturing, light, moderate, and heavy. Um, light has very limited fabrication, limited refinement of materials. Moderate, moderate refinement, moderate... Um, production of materials, and then heavy is, is really what you think of as, you know, serious manufacturing. So the, the zoning ordinance is a little bit, um, it, it allows some interpretation in those uses. We did talk with the applicant about their operations, and as we discussed it, we determined that it falls under the moderate category, okay. um, which does have, you know, it may create some impacts, especially when you look at residential uses, right. which is why in this case, uh, we work with them and they're restricting the location of that use closer to the east side, further away from the residential developments. So we do believe that their operations, it's consistent with the mix that they're proposing on site um, mm -hmm. with you know, also office, uh, other, other commercial and residential uses and with the standards they're proposing, uh, we do think it's going to be um, an effective development with the inclusion of residential. So. Okay, and that leads me to my point, which was the indication was that the moderate uh, intensity industrial would be at least 700 feet from Parkwood. We have a fly or something in here. From Parkwood, is that what you said? Correct. But the residential is on the east side of Parkwood. So is it going to be 700 feet from Parkwood or 700 feet from the residential? And if it's 700 feet from the residential, what does our zoning ordinance require the distance to be between residential and the moderate industry, uh, moderate intensity industry? Sure, it'll be 700 feet from the property line and the residential needs to be constructed within 250 feet of Parkwood Boulevard. So there will be a separation. Yeah, the, the ordinance doesn't have a specification between these two land uses. Um, so we, we applied what we thought was a reasonable dimension um, with the proposed buildings and site design. And so essentially there's a, I think a 450 foot dimension, is that correct, Katja? Somewhere yes. in that range. Um, typically when the city has uses that may be impactful to residents, around 300 to 500 feet is, is okay. a normal distance that we apply. That, that helps me get a sense of what do we typically do and uh, of course, we don't know because we're, we're designing this or if it's approved, we're giving them the opportunity to, you know, have that type of operation going on, but we don't know what the next person coming in with that same allowance would do. So I just want to make sure that we're keeping some gap there between that. So, okay, very good. Any more questions for staff? Oh, Commissioner Kerry, sorry. Yeah, so um, could you, be, you know, this commission, I think, wisely, frequently, uh, looks at noise and other environmental issues. Could you give us a little bit more texture on what these guys actually do and what risks, or should they do that? Let's look at them. But you, you've talked to them, and I, I guess so, whatever you want to do, Chair, but. Yeah, yeah, we have, and I, I think if I were to speak to their operations, they would probably just shake their heads and wait till they stood up to talk about it. <laughs> okay. But we did talk about the impact that their operations would have if we added, if residential were on this property, and we did feel that, you know, some separation was needed, um, but that what they're proposing uh, would be appropriate within nearby residential context. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. Thank you. All right, I will open the public hearing and we'll let the applicant uh, speak to the commission. Chair, I should have announced the accompanying uh, preliminary site plan with Go this. Go ahead and do that while they're coming up. Thank you. Um, if we could have Claire Hempel, uh, Jeremy Franklin, and Frank Zaccanelli come down. 
Uh, agenda item 2B that accompanies this zoning case is a preliminary site plan, EDS headquarters, block A, lot one, 775 mid-rise residential units, professional general administrative office, moderate intensity manufacturing, and a hotel on one lot on 91.0 acres located at the southeast corner of Legacy Drive and Parkwood Boulevard. Again, this is zoned commercial employment and the applicant is EDS Legacy Partners, LLC. This is uh, for administrative consideration. Hello everyone, my name is Frank Zaccanelli and uh, I'm the president of Next Point Development Company. Uh, more importantly than that, I'm a 42 year resident of Plano and uh, was actually lucky enough to be involved when the EDS was actually being developed. I spent a long time with the Perot family um, working on an assortment of different things that we did. But I've been in Plano for a long time and uh, very proud uh, to be a resident here. Bottom line to this facility is it's been sitting vacant for too long. I think we can all agree on that. I probably drive by three times a week as I'm going to Legacy East or West, or I live in Willow Bend. And um, I had the great opportunity to come in to Next Point, which is a $17 billion under management company, financial advisor, that has a big real estate portfolio. I've known the chairman for a long time. I was basically, I wouldn't say semi-retired, but I was working out of my home. And uh, I was lucky enough through the years to be involved with Alliance Airport, American Airlines Center, a lot of different big developments. And so he called me and he said, you know, what do you think about putting a life science center? And I had studied a little bit about life science and I said, does the building work? You know, is that possible to be able to convert this 80s building? I was a young businessman when Ross Perot was holding court in the mid to late 80s as they were building this facility and designing it. And I said, does the building actually work? Well, we've hired the top engineering company in the country for life science, CRB, and they'll be talking a little bit tonight. But the long and short of it is, is that this is a project that probably is the biggest economic development deal I've ever seen. Ray Perryman, who is uh, foremost you know, authority on economic development says, it's the biggest he's ever seen. And when you take a look at the jobs and the tax base and all of the things that come along with it, what we're trying to do is build a hub here that would be a gateway from the East Coast to the West Coast. Boston has 40 million square feet of life science. San Diego has 30 million. I think that in North Texas, we should have 10, 15 million square feet of life science because it's a hugely emerging business. It, they're really curing all kinds of different things with the research and all of the you know, events that are occurring inside these facilities. To answer your question, Michael, um, we own another 110 acres that is not on the docket tonight that we bought that we plan on putting the research hospital in. So we can talk a little bit about that, but this will encompass from soup to nuts all the way from the incubator capabilities where they're really these young scientists are doing all the hard work, all the way to the graduation space, the R&D space, and then as you get into the therapeutic production facilities, um, that's really there for um, you know, therapeutic production, the making of drugs. And when we look at it, there's a huge push in the United States to keep this manufacturing on shore. We're gonna have about 2.4 million square feet of it in the total project. On this particular site, the 91, we have 800,000 square feet. It's, it's, it's the making of the drugs. It's about as clean as a hospital. Uh, there's gigantic air handlers and everything else that goes on with that. But this is a business in Plano that I think we need to be in and dropping it in the middle of this eco zone. We look at Legacy as being our partner. We don't want to be in the hospitality business. I'd like to never build another apartment, but we have to be able to house these numbers of companies and people that come in. We're not doing any multifamily if we get approved until the third phase. We spent, at that point, over $2 billion. 
And we have a gigantic up and running program at that point. We just have to make sure that we can house the people because this is a very communal business that we're really getting involved with. Um, so I'm gonna be here to answer any questions. I wanna turn this over to Jeremy uh, Franklin who is the CRB representative and he'll talk a little bit more about everything. If we wanna switch this, uh, we, have a, we have a little bit of a, uh, I go right here. I'm not very good at this. Right here. All right. This is a letter that we wrote, that I signed, that basically I hope addressed some of the concerns that we had been hearing. We, we've asked the planning and zoning people, you know, what have been the main concerns? And so this is a letter we'd like to put this into the record, and I know these guys have, have seen that, um, on exactly um, what we think some of the concerns are. And I signed it and we addressed it. And basically what it says is that exactly what we're doing and how we're doing it. So uh, I think the letter is important. Here's the site plan. And when you look at the site plan, you see the five main buildings in the middle, they're in white and the God pod sits in the middle. Uh, the southernmost piece, and Jeremy will cover this, the southernmost building and um, the manufacturing, the, the therapeutic production facility on the southern side are gonna be in phase one. We're then gonna build phase two, which we're gonna take the other side of the God pod and build out that building along with another therapeutic production facility. It will not be until phase three, and like I said, about $2 billion has been spent uh, that we think there's a need for these apartments. Again, this is not a very high end use for us, given what we're having to pay for land right now uh, to put apartments on. We're not trying to build apartments, but we feel that we have to be able to house this massive amount of uh, growth that we think is gonna come by virtue of this facility. That's why we put it in phase three. And so that's kind of our, our site plan. I'll go back. This is a great shot. If you guys go out to the facility now, everyone knows you kind of drive underneath and you go from the west side to the east side. What we're gonna do is encase that whole area and make that the huge market hall. Again, I, I can't overemphasize that this is such a communal business, the life science business. Everybody wants to be congregated together. That's how all these great therapies and all these great things occur. So we're closing that off and we're doing it somewhat also for security reasons. And that will be the great hall. And outside on the west side, we're building the park that Claire is gonna talk uh, to you guys about with all of the outdoor functions of this kind of facing parkwood. It's gonna be a beautiful park. It's gonna be fantastic for the workforce and it really is gonna create a, a great dynamic. On the back side is gonna be really where the therapeutic production occurs and it's gonna have much more security in terms of access in and out. This is gonna become very public. Here's another kind of shot straight at it. If you're going straight right now, you just go right through that glass and you go over on the other side, but we're gonna encase that as part of the, um, as part of the uh, redevelopment. And then here's a bit of a interactive, which will kind of give you a feel for that grand hall, uh, which is really gonna be a, be a centerpiece really for uh, this development. And you know, the employment numbers here are, are enormous. Uh, first phase is 7,800. And by the time you get done with the fourth phase, you're gonna have over 30,000 uh, new jobs. And so we have to make sure that we're, we're planning for all that. This park is gonna be a wonderful addition to the amenity package. And it's gonna be open to the public. So you don't have to work here in order to go to the park. And Claire will talk um, a little bit more about that. So I'll be back if anyone has any questions. We're excited about this project. Obviously, as a Plano resident, I'm beyond excited about, I don't wanna pick up the paper anymore and read about what Frisco's doing. So 
I'm going to be very, very happy if we can figure this out and, and, and get this project moving. So without further ado, let me bring Jeremy up. Great to be here to see you all. How much time they have? Jeremy Franklin. We have five minutes and 30 seconds. Wow. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, Jeremy Franklin, architect with CRB Group. So I wanted to go through the phasing, which Frank hit on some already, so I'll go pretty quickly. But phase one is renovation of the southern two main buildings. We call them H1 and H2 along with modifications of the south parking garage. We're demolishing a portion of it to the east so that we have space for the southeast therapeutic manufacturing building. So we're focusing on getting the science spaces moving and activated first in order to bring people back to the campus and uh, get a lot of activity started, along with the park space being critical to this first phase as well. And with phase two, we're extending those science needs up to the northeast, so renovating the H3, which is the north of the three original buildings, along with the northeast manufacturing building and a new parking deck on the north side. And the third phase is building out that mid-rise residential buildings along with the hotel. So we're intending these residential buildings to be uh, high-end, mid-rise, the plan is for them to be five residential floors over two levels of parking. And the hotel, both of these functions are very important to making this campus succeed. The hotel is gonna be great for conferences with people who are coming to this campus. And a lot of the residents will be employees on the campus. Scientists work some different hours than a lot of us do, 24 hours a day. They have research projects going on. They can run back and forth between their apartment and their lab. So having this full ecosystem really allows us to work as like a live, work, play campus. So having all these programs together is really what makes it successful for the long term. I can hand off to Claire if you want to run. Evening, commissioners. My name is Claire Hempel with Design Workshop. Uh, we're the landscape architects on the project. So I'm here to talk about the open space, um, in particular the open space that's located on the west side of the building. So if you focus between where the multifamilies are on Parkwood between, and between the, um, the TRQ building, that's where our focus has been. And the key to this has been working with Parks Department staff um, and making sure that this park space is going to feel it's open for the public, um, that it connects to the trails and sidewalks that go off site into Legacy Town Center to the south and to the west. Um, so the, it's important that this open space feel like it feels like it's for the community and that it feels welcoming. And so that includes the beautiful open lawns. Um, that you can see here, lots of walking trails, varying widths from anywhere from seven foot to 10 foot, um, and lots of shade trees. Um, we're even moving some of the trees that are there on site um, to accommodate um, uh, some of the new spaces, and it'll feel like there's lots of instant shade on day one. You can see here that there's a lot of beautiful lawn space that would be used for pickup games of flag football, um, soccer, um, whatever activities or uh, uh, events may happen, both affiliated with the building or otherwise. Mm -hmm. And the pathways are really connecting all of these spaces throughout. And so that's a, a really important adjective for the, the open space here is connectivity. Um, and the, the space that Frank showed earlier, the very beautiful hardscape plaza, will have two water uh, interactive water features. One of the ones that you can play in, which you can imagine this time of year is very attractive to go to. Um, the other one is a, a really beautiful statement piece as you're coming into uh, and kind of wayfinding to get to the front door of the building. Um, so with that, I will hand it back over to Frank. I'm here for questions. Sir, you have a minute, 30 yeah, thank seconds. Thank you, Claire. So just in closing again, um, we're here to answer any questions that anyone might have. We're very excited about this program. I'm personally excited about it because I've been a resident for so long here, and I just think this is going to be great for Plano. I think it's going to be the school district is going to be directly involved. They want to build a big center here uh, of excellence for their biology and chemistry and all the other pieces. Collin College is directly involved uh, with us and is talking, we're talking with them pretty much on a regular basis. And I can just close with this, that the user community that's out there really sees this as a gateway between 
Boston, and San Diego. We have a great chance here, you know, in North Texas. So um, we'll be answer any questions that you have at the end. So thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Um, before we get to questions for the applicant, do we have other speakers on this? No, we do not. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, in that case, then, uh, I see Commissioner Ratliff, you have a question for the applicant? Yes. Okay. Sir? <laughs> yes, sir. Thanks, Mr. Zacnelli. Um Great presentation. Uh, thanks. Well thought out. Looks like y'all put a lot of effort into it, so I appreciate the, the depth of the information you provided. A couple of questions for you. You've heard the staff report. Um, there's two. Uh, obviously, y'all have been in negotiations on all the PD language. I presume that y'all are in agreement with all of the PD language that's in the... Yes. Okay. And then the two additional things we already talked about tonight. Um, the 40 foot versus 30 foot setback, is that something that, that is acceptable to y'all at this point? Good evening. My name is Netta Hosseini. I am with Kimley Horn. Um, the only challenge we see with that is the, uh, without affecting the design of the park, we have 20 feet between our building and our limits of sidewalk along the quasi-public street. We would request to keep that space to allow flexibility for additional landscaping and dry utilities. I know it is a very specific request, but on other mid-rise residential um, developments that we have done, oftentimes we find that it's hard to fit in gas and underground electric and telecom, and so we would like to reserve that space for um, the design of the set, set things. And one thing I would like to point out, the uh, reason why there is a 30 to 40 foot um, difference is that there is a, uh, the property line basically does like an L shape. And so majority of the property, we're really sitting at 40 feet, but where we have that tighter space where the property line um, goes to the east a little bit by 10 feet, that's where we hit that 30 feet. Here for more answers. Okay, I'm following. I have to look at their site plan, but that that's a, appreciate the explanation. The second part that the staff recommended, and all your site plans and all your there park is. planning and everything else, y'all are showing all the same green space that the staff is recommending be also dedicated as parkland. Is there a reason that y'all want to keep it private, or that you have future plans for it, or what is your reaction to that? Um, is that the is that the yellow uh, the, piece the, that we had? Right. You know, I, I think that from our standpoint, we're building a, a pretty big park. And I don't know what's going to happen over the next seven years. Uh, this is a seven year program. It's gonna be done in four phases. And each phase is gonna be about a billion dollars of, of spend. And I just think from a lot of years of experience, it's wise for us to make sure that we keep that alive for a daycare center or other things that could pop up that are important that ultimately um, we may need. And so our position is, is that we think the park is adequate right now. And if we leave that in kind of a gray zone to be dealt with later, I think we're probably okay with that. But designating it tonight as open space, I, I don't think that would be the smartest thing that we could all do. I think there may be a use for that, that of course the city would approve or, or not approve, but uh, we think the park is really adequate from an open space. There's gonna be a lot of open space there. So that, that's just our position. Okay, I just wanna get your perspective on it, thank you. Yes. Commissioner Bruno. Thank you, well just following up on that last question, um, what would you do with those additional two acres in the interim before you um, realize there's a need for a daycare center or whatever? Well, I, I think it really is built in really for flexibility. Mm -hmm. I think that when we look at it, the park, Claire, is how big? Nine and a half. Nine and a half. Nine and, half. Nine and, nine and a half acres. We think that's a really good sized park. And we think there's gonna be an incredible amount of open space. As you go to Parkwood, you know, this is really gonna look great. When you're coming down, you're gonna see these water features, you're gonna see this gigantic park, you're gonna see this playground for kids. You know, it's open completely to the public. I think our position, sir, has been that we think nine and a half acres at this point is a, is a pretty good 
um, amount of open space for right now. Well, I appreciate that, but my question is, in the interim, what ha what is going to happen on those two acres? Are they just going to be no, a mound no, of bare dirt, or are you going to plant a lawn no, there? Nothing until we decide. We'll just put some grass there until we decide, come back to the city, take a look after phase one of, of where we might be there. Mm -hmm. That that was our plan. Okay. You could come back to the city when you decide what you want to do with it. Well, we'd have and, to and come get back approval, to the city. You know, yeah. Approval at that time. Yes, yes. And it could be open space in the interim. It could be open. It could end up open space. Yeah. Yes, sir. Commissioner Ali. I guess a question to the city. Can we put in a stipulation in either the PD language to... That uh, force is a strong word, but to force that the, the, those two acres um, be not used for something like additional therapeutic production buildings, I'm making stuff up. Design-wise, I know it, it probably doesn't make sense to put it that close to residential, but could we force um, a stipulation that the uh, those two acres could not be used for an extension of the residential, for instance. So there are some um, restrictions in the language right now. Residential has to be within 250 feet of Parkwood, so I believe that does not bleed into that area currently. Right. Um, the therapeutic production, the again, the manufacturing is restricted. It has to be 700 feet away from Parkwood. So it does limit the use currently in that area. It would be another another use, another commercial use that the applicant would choose, which would be allowed in the district, but it could not be manufacturing and it could not be housing. And, 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 and again, uh, we would be fine just leaving it at this point that we can't really do anything with it. We'll make sure it looks good. We'll make sure there's grass on it um, and then come back to the city if we think that we need it for some other kind of use. Again, we think the nine and a half acres, our only position is we think the nine and a half acres is as sufficient as, as, as it needs to be in terms of the open space with the park. This park is gonna be a great park. I mean, we are gonna not, you know, we're not gonna spare any expense. This is gonna be a really cool park. So I totally understand. Th and thank the, you for the, the question. The presentation makes it it, look, it looks beautiful. Um, anyone who has watched me, I bias heavily towards more open space than anything else. Um, a question on the therapeutic production facility. Yes, sir. Um, I'm trying to tie it to what Chairman Downs talked about, the moderate intensity versus what I think of as uh, therapeutic production. I have a bachelor's in applied chemistry, and I'm trying to figure out how that reaches what what, what's been produced there, which would Pharmaceutical drugs and uh, therapies for cell and gene therapy that are developed inside the uh, existing facility in the incubators and in the labs. Um, every um, life science program has a form of therapeutic production. And we think that we could really make a huge case that a lot of it should come here to Texas because of the labor and the taxes and some of the other things. And we want to be able to bring um, that off from offshore. We want to be able to build that in the United States. And because of the size and the scope of not only the 91 acres, but the other 110 acres, we've got the ability to build about 2.5 million square feet of this therapeutic production. And we think the market is raging to be able to build that in the center of the country. And so that was part and parcel to a lot of our plans. You know, really it's, it's gonna be cl very clean. Uh, it's got all the air handling. It's got 40 foot clears inside the building. And it's, it's gonna be, it's gonna be the, the equivalent of uh, a real clean space. Not, no, no raw manufacturing as we think of manufacturing. So it's the probably the fine particulate matter produced or the effluent waste that triggers the moderate intensity classification. Yes. Okay. Right. But thank you for the question, Commissioner Kerry. Yeah, I've got a few questions. Several. Uh, for, uh, comment first. 
I find this fascinating. I've been sitting here for a couple years, and this is one of the more interesting projects I've seen while I've been sitting in here, so i just start with that. Uh, let's go to the parks, just to kind of um, level set. Nine and a half acres. Um, Eric, what is the Windhaven Park we put at Windhaven and Spring Creek? Do we know? I'm just trying to figure out what nine and a half acre park is compared to some things I know. Just a level set. It's, it's a good Plano trivia question. Give me a minute and I will answer for you. I, I have a good comparable, and I think most people might know in this room, Clyde Warren Park is about, um, with all of the phases together, roughly seven or so acres. Okay. So um, this will be a little bit bigger than that. Okay. Okay, great. Um, are there any tenants in this building currently? HP was in there a while back. Are they still there? Yeah, no, the building has been, been vacant completely for about five years. And, um, you know, it's on the tax rolls now at very low numbers. And, you know, the position that I've taken, I probably would not have come on with Next Point to lead this if it was in any other city. But because of this facility and because it's in my hometown, I just think we have an incredible opportunity to put Plano in the life science world, in the world, on the map. This is probably the most robust uh, building plan of anything that I've seen dropped in the middle of this gigantic eco zone. See, that's the beauty of this. This isn't some greenfield development. These buildings exist. This eco zone exists. And so dropping it in, we just think that the, the opportunities are pretty much endless. And, you know, Next Point has the financial capability to be able to do this. That's one of the big keys. Got to have a lot of money to do this. Great. Um, my, my next question is on phasing. Can you give us a general idea of one, two, three, and how far off we are until those apartments may be built? What's that look like? Yeah, Just I can, at, a, at a quick level. Yeah, I, I can give a little bit of that, and Jeremy, you add in. Um, each phase is going to take about 18 months once we break ground. That's rough numbers. You know, we've got all the numbers set now on phase one. That's going to be $1.1 billion, and it's going to encompass the therapeutic production facility, the God Pod, and then what we call H1, the building. If you were on the east side and you're looking at the God Pod, it's on the left side. Phase two is the second therapeutic production 18 months later with H3. If you're looking at the God Pod from the east side, the building on the right. So that's going to be the second phase. So before any apartments are even contemplated, we're going to be two and a half years, three years down the road. Before you even start thinking it, it, it. Yeah. And, and again, I really want to make this point because I know that the apartments, every time people hear about apartments, I wish we didn't have to build any of them. I mean, this land is, is very valuable. And what we're having to pay for this additional acreage, the reason that I'm so shocked about it, when we ran the Pro Group and we, had, we, we owned all this land, as everyone knows, Ross owned it all. Should have kept it. But the fact of the matter is, is that apartments is not the reason that we're doing anything. We just have to make sure that we can maintain a level that we can house the people that are going to be coming here from all over the country. And so we think phase three is about the right time. And one of the great things about West Plano, you know, the apartment occupancy is over 90 percent. So we got to be careful about just making sure that we can. I don't want people living in Frisco. I love Frisco. I don't want them living there. I don't want them living in Carrollton. You know, I want them living in Plano because you know, that's really all part of this master plan. So since we're talking about apartments um, and looking at your apartment sizes, they seem a bit on the small side to me. So I did a little bit of research and and from some data I got nationally. One bedroom apartments are typically 790 feet on the average, two or 1138. Yours are significantly smaller. Just quickly, why so much smaller for your apartments? It, it, young, it, seems significant, it seems significantly smaller to me. Young business people, we've tried to take a look at the demographics of the type of people that are going to come here and who are going to work here. So the young professionals um, trying to keep the cost of uh, you know, their lease payments down, uh, but again, I think that we would be foolish to think we have every answer on that 
until we get two or three years down the road. So what we've planned today, we may have to come back and say we need some bigger units or sure. we need this or we need that. But given the, the, the dynamics of the people that are actually working, the demographics of the people working, they're young college graduate type of people that are really just looking to get their feet wet now in this, in this industry. Okay. Um, I, I asked a question about wastewater earlier, and it was deferred to you guys. Just Again, quickly, can you give us just a little insight into that issue and, and where we might be with that? Yes, absolutely. We have done a analysis for the full build-out of the site and have provided those numbers to the city's engineering department, and they are actively um, looking at that. So they've sent it to their consultants to run the models. We have not received feedback yet. But when I checked in with engineering about two weeks ago, they said that they're still looking at the models for offsite infrastructure. So we will work with them to accommodate whatever needs to be done. But those yeah, numbers have to be The reason for the question is, if, again, on this commission, we've had a number of things around wastewater. So it's, mm -hmm. it's an interesting issue. And so I, I just have a few more questions. Um, in terms of manufacturing impact, so you're going to be making pharmaceuticals. Does that mean that you will have viruses and things that, I mean, so recently, I, I don't know if anybody's ever heard of this, but there's bio labs. It's yes. a joke. That's a joke. So anyway, everybody's heard about bio labs. And so how significant, are, is there any danger to the things you'll be testing there and the drugs and the thing, the gene therapies that you'll be doing? What, if any, risk might that pose to our area from those things coming here? Well, it, it's not going to be a Wuhan lab, so. <laughs> no, there's uh, only one of those so far. Yeah, there's only one of those. Uh, the work that's done in the incubator is really a bunch of cell and gene therapy laboratory testing and playing with different models and everything. There really isn't any virus. This isn't a viral thing at all. And with the manufacturing, it is as simple literally as a gigantic white room with all kinds of equipment and air handlers and everything, building pharmaceuticals, making pharmaceuticals, or the other therapies on the cell and gene side. We're spending about 80% of this facility concentrating on cell and gene therapy, which is the real McCoy when it comes down to cancers and a lot of other right. things. So we're not, the, the, there'll be no embedded viruses or anything like that. We don't see that there's any risk at all. And certainly on the manufacturing side, it's literally as clean <coughs> as, a, as a hospital. Great, thank you. So. You know, um, as, as I look at your project, again, I, I think it's interesting. It's exciting for Plano. Um, you know, the only drawback I have here is the same one you have, that, you know, the building of apartments. And, you know, when you look at our, our guiding principles, I mean, one of our key guiding principles is that we're going to, uh, you know, change that complements the city suburban character in our history. And there, there is that. We're trying to, you know, by our comprehensive plan, we're trying to um, keep our suburban character. So with that said, and I understand your need for apartments, and I, I see what you're saying, and it's logical to me. Do you need 775? Are you, are you open to doing something less than that? Because that seems like a lot, and I understand the need here. And by the way, I, a lot of times I don't understand that need. But in this instance, I do. Um, are you, are, do you have to have that many apartments? Well, let me, let me give you the, the employment numbers that are in Ray Perryman's report that is, everyone has access to. He, he is literally the Michael Jordan of economic development reports. I mean, he does everything for the state of Texas, but he also does a lot of work up in Washington and he is the foremost authority. If we looked at his numbers, we're talking about now at full build out, there's going to be 32,000 jobs. All right. 32,000 new jobs. We need three times those apartments. I mean, if you really looked at it from a scientific standpoint, what we're hoping is is that there'll be other developments because we don't have any room to do anymore. But to do less, that would really hamper us from the standpoint that we think our model shows we, we, need, we need way more ability to be able to house these people. And I'm assuming that hmm. some of the higher end people are gonna buy houses in Plano and they're gonna live here sure. and work here. But you know, our model tells us that, that that's just a number that we thought made sense where we didn't build these gigantic buildings and everything else. And again, I, I will tell you, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Gra Mr. Uh, Kerry, if we didn't have to build these apartments, I'd be the happiest guy in the world. So, and all that makes sense to me. Uh, with that said, this is my final question. 
did you give consideration to, rather than building apartments, since these are young professionals and they're getting started, giving them a chance at home ownership and turning this into an ownership opportunity for these people? I, I guess these jobs are going to be decent paying jobs, right? So they're, they're did you give any consideration jobs. to, um, you guys seem buttoned up, so I'm, I'm guessing you looked in every corner, but did you give consideration to creating ownership here for these people? Well, we didn't, we didn't want to get into the condo business, but again, the, these apartments at 775 is just a drop in the bucket to 32,000 new jobs. And a lot of these jobs are gonna be created. Companies are gonna be moving people in. And so, you know, I think it's a combo platter of everything. If I could just build, if we could just build at next point, life science buildings, I'd be the happiest guy in the world at 25 and $30 a square foot. So, you know, the apartments are, are not a economic winner for us right. at all. It's just a necessity that we, we have to be able to house. Well, I, thank you very much for answering all yes, my questions. Yes, sir, Mr. Carey. Mr. Nolan. Bit of a clarification. Um, when these units go up, are they open to the public? Can I find it on Zillow, for instance? Sir, again, I'm sorry. When the units go up, the residential units, uh, is it open to the public or is it strictly for the life science? Completely employees? open to the public. Okay. Completely open to the public. And again, as we sit today, I don't think you'll, you'll have on my schedule, you won't have a move in until. Um, four years from now. So we're talking about four years down the road before these apartments would actually be operational, but completely open to the public. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Lyle, would you, do you have any questions? I do, thank you, Chairman. The, the first question I would ask is, where has Next Point done this in other parts of the country? Uh, Next Point has not done this in other parts of the country, but we are a big investor in the life science business. Um, we invested as one of the largest investors in a company called IQHQ, which is uh, based out of Raleigh-Durham. And we have uh, invested in a company that basically is now out in the marketplace to raise, I don't know, a couple billion dollars. Um, from a development standpoint, we haven't done any of this related development, but by the time that we get done with CRB and all the architectural and engineering is done, it's literally the building of the buildings. The real science is what our good friends from CRB and Kimley Horn bring, which is the ability to be able to convert these buildings. And then on the new buildings, when you really look at the, the uh, therapeutic production facility, sir, those are tilt wall buildings. Those are the simplest buildings in the world to build. It's what goes inside of them. You know, 40 foot clears all the air handlers. So I'm very confident that under my direction, uh, we can build any and all of this. I brought in a great staff. They've allowed me as much latitude as we can have, but we're in the life science business, but really nobody has ever built 4 million square feet in one location. This is quite ambitious. You've talked about the phasing with phase one, phase two, and then this multifamily part of the project being phase three. You also spoke of 32,000 jobs. What jobs do you expect to come with phase one and phase two? Uh, there'll be a lot of technical related jobs in labs, a lot of research and development, and then uh, you know pharmaceutical production. Uh, that is gonna be a big piece of this. So. Uh, a lot of the lab technicians, scientists related stuff, you know, um, and, and, and really uh, a lot of research and development in the first two phases. So, you know, the last phases, and here again, we haven't really talked about the hospital, uh, the research hospital, only because it's not part of this plan, but we have designs early on to bring in a research hospital in the middle of this. We think that fully completes this $4 billion program. And with the research hospital, you're gonna have every kind of you know, function inside a research hospital, like a Mayo Clinic, UT Southwestern, uh, Dana-Farber, all these major players. So the vast majority of the jobs in phases one and two are gonna be technical jobs. Some of them are gonna be pharmaceutical manufacturing jobs but a lot of R&D and a lot of lab work. Thank you. And I, I guess the part that I'm a little confused about is that 
the reasoning for the multifamily is to house the people that are coming out of college to, that are going to take these important jobs. But if the jobs are existing in phase one and phase two, it seems to me that the apartments would almost need to be built alongside it. If, if the apartments are really for to house those people, if you are, they've already brought phase one and phase two and all those employees are here, they will have already moved in somewhere and be before you're building these apartments at all, right? Well, no, because uh, the first phase is 7,800 jobs. And in, in the first two phases is about 12,000 jobs. There's going to be 32,000 jobs. And so the last two phases still are gigantic job creators. And only because I've lived here, only because I've been in front of the zoning board more times than I could admit over 43 years, I didn't want to come in here with apartments on phase one. So we're just going to have to make do as best we can with the surrounding areas. What I mentioned before, I really mean, I don't want people to have to go to Frisco to live, but I think we have enough infrastructure in Plano to be able to handle the first two phases. If all things were equal, I'd probably try to build 300 units just at the start, just to make sure, but I didn't want to come in with that plan. I didn't want to do that. So that, that's the real reason why. But there's going to be an enormous amount of job growth after phase two. And we think at our look at the marketplace, especially across the street and down the street and north of uh, Legacy East, there's enough there to get us through, we think, the first two phases. Well, the last thing I would say is, I mean, this... Sir? This, or, sorry, I'm getting a little feedback. Can y'all hear me? Yes. I, I can now. This is a really big project. It is. Biggest these, one I've these, ever done. These, Sir? You're right. These apartments, I mean, this, this project's going to happen without the apartments at all, is it not? No. No, we're not going to be, we would have to scale it back. You know, the, one of the first questions that Thermo Fisher asks, or some of these big companies, is where are our people going to live? And, you know, we have to answer that question. When they come here and see the eco zone that's built, they get it for the first couple, three years. But you have to remember, this is a seven-year project. We're going to build this in four phases. So if the apartments didn't get approved, we can't build what we have on the docket because we're not going to be able to house the people no matter what plan we come up with. So that would be the most direct way I could answer it. Will the project happen? A portion of the project would happen. But if we can't house the people, then the companies are not going to have comfort that they can locate these big facilities here. And, and if you look around the, the whole spectrum of, of life science, it becomes a gigantic issue. You know, they want people to work, live, and play pretty much in the same area. So we're just going by a year to two years of a lot of hard work, a lot of studying. And again, I, I, if I didn't have to build any apartments, I'd be the happiest guy in the world. But that's not reality. The last thing, you referenced this building, and it's just a term I'm not familiar with. It was God something? God pod. That's what the, the city is called, so I stuck with it. Gotcha. And what is that, the centerpiece in this existing building? It's the yes. centerpiece, yeah. I tried to call okay. it something else, and I got stopped in the city manager's office. Don't be mad at me, city manager. But they said, no, that's the God pod. I said, okay, I'll, I'll go with that. Thank, thank you, Mr. Rowley. Thank you, for sir. Understanding. Thank you for your questions. Commissioner Riley. Yeah, just one follow-up question. Um, Phase one and phase two is roughly a million three square feet, give or take. What's about the, give or take? Yes. Yeah. Um, what's the lease up schedule on that? Is that I mean, do you have a million square feet of people out there waiting for you to have this online, or what? What are y'all looking at in the lease up? We think that we'll have some early announcements. Um, tonight is a very important night, but the next important night is getting through the city, the county, and the school district with the incentive program. We are negotiating in good faith now where I can't do anything legally or publicly, but we're negotiating now. We're pretty convinced to put our money where our mouth is that the life science business wants to come to North Texas. They want to be here. 
They love the, 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 the central government. They love the no taxes. They love the workforce. They love the fact that Plano is such a great city. I mean, I go around the, the country and I'll eventually go around the world selling Plano. And there's a lot to sell. I mean, you want to take a look at quality of life. You want to take a look at housing. You want to take a look at the police situation. You want to take a look at the whole gamut of Plano. It's as good a city, a suburban city to a major city that there is in the country. There's not even a question. And when people come here, they see it. We try to explain these buildings. They walk into buildings and they're just, they can't believe it. And so we've got some advantages, but we've, we, we, we've, we've got a lot of work to do, but we feel very good about the marketplace. We're willing to put our money where our mouth is. Okay. Thank you for the question. Let's focus on land use stuff versus getting too deep into, anyway, let's go ahead. Yeah, uh, and it's to, to land use and just trying to understand. So next point, uh, owns the property. Yes, it, it's owned in a partnership, the CDS partnership, but next point is the owner and operator, yes. CRB will operate the research quarter if- They, they won't operate the research, they're designing uh, they're, the, uh, they're the architect for all of this project, all 4 million square feet of it. Gotcha. And uh, Kimley Horn is working with them. But CRB is the number one life science player in the world, not in the United States, in the world. And so we were lucky enough to get their top team. We have spent an unbelievable amount of time on this because if we were building just straight buildings, it would be a lot easier than converting these buildings. But the great news is they convert you know, I was, Ross Pro Sr. was my mentor. I think he would look down on us tonight and be happy with what we're doing. It's almost like he thought about this before he built the building. I mean, it just lays out with the labs and the R&D. It lays out perfectly. So next point's the owner and CRB is the, is the architect. And then we have JLL, their top U.S. team that's the marketing group that ultimately we work with on a daily basis. So we've got the team pretty well set, but like I said, I can't do anything till if we're lucky enough to get through this tonight, on August 28th, it looks like we have our last uh, city council meeting. And uh, if that happens, I'd like to be under construction by the end of September. Okay, my turn, but I'll be, I'll be pretty brief. To me, this looks like a very high end, um, if you were to go to a Ivy League school campus or something where you, you need housing there because the people basically live in the labs. I think about, uh, uh, what movie was it? The Martian, right? And you have the, the young guy that, Purnell, whoever Purnell is, right, who's sleeping on a cot in his room because that's what he, that's his, you mentioned live, work, and play. Well, their play is their work. Yeah. That's all they really need. They need a place to lay their head at night. So to me, the 775 apartments, I think it's just a token because you really probably need more than that. And yeah. honestly, across the street is like 96% occupied. So right. you're gonna have a problem. And I know people don't like the apartments. They say they bring in traffic, but on the other hand, that might be 775 people that aren't driving to the campus. So I see the need for them. And to, to Mr. Lyle's point, I'm surprised that they're not integrated earlier into the project personally. And I understand what you're saying is that yeah. if you came in leading with residential, just go ahead and walk away. Kind of that's the mood. Well, let me say this. If, again, we're lucky enough to get a positive vote tonight and we're a year and a half down the road and we're just overwhelmed, it, it, yeah. we'll come back. Right. But, you know, I, I really didn't feel it was necessary based on our data uh, for the first two phases. Right. So um, I think that uh, you, between all of them, they've probably asked all the questions I could have uh, at this point. So if we don't have any other speakers on it at this point, we're done. That's it. Okay. I'm going to, thank you. I'm going to close the public hearing. And all right, Mr. Hill. I don't have a question. Just wanted to respond to your question earlier about parkland. So Windhaven is very large, it's 123 acres. Um, the Hager Park downtown is seven acres. Uh, Bruce, Bruce Glasscock Park in Legacy West is about seven acres as well. Okay, questions, comments? 
Mr. Brunoff has a, he's number you one. Can come back for another question? No, I'm talking with these guys. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, a project of this size, this scope, this degree of economic impact, um, presenting such a, a, a well-integrated and complementary mix of uses internally, I think, is an opportunity for the city of Plano that we dare not pass up. Okay? It's just that simple. Uh, going back to my previous experience in the city of Irving, I remember when national companies would come through looking to locate, and they were considering Irving, and they were considering other places too. For example, Boeing came through, and you know Irving tried to sell them on moving to Irving, and they didn't. They moved to Chicago, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. ExxonMobil came through, and they did decide to relocate in Irving. But in each case, it's a situation where when a major employer comes in and tells you they're interested in moving here, they've, they've been looking at other places. And if you don't get them, somebody else will. Mm -hmm. Okay, They could wind up in Frisco if we don't take this opportunity. Um, 30,000 jobs is a huge economic impact. I am not afraid of the apartments. Um, there, a project of this size basically is creating its own housing market, its own need for housing, which they are satisfying to the best of their ability to the extent this property will permit, you know, the size of the, of the property. Um, I appreciate your point about um, having the employees live within the development will actually cut down on trips rather than build traffic. Uh, there were a number of uh, written comments from citizens concerned about crime. I do not believe for one second that this company is in the business of hiring criminals to, you know, to make drugs. Uh, I think the employees that they're going to be putting in there are going to be college educated, uh, affluent people. Um, these apartments are being built to satisfy a specific market specific to this project. Uh, I think it's a wonderful opportunity and I intend to vote for it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kerr. Yeah, I think there's been a lot of good points made here, Commissioner Brunoff and Chair, I, I agree with you in terms of the walkability of this. You know, um, anytime we're talking about adding apartments to Plano, like, uh, like Mr. Zaccanelli here, I, I pause because um, I think that we, you know, we have a comprehensive plan that talks about preserving the suburban character of Plano. Um, and, you know, I, I know some people think maybe Plano is no longer a bedroom community, and I, I just refuse to submit to that. I think that we can be, and I think we need to try to preserve that because it is part of Plano. With that said, I think this is a fantastic project. And like Commissioner Brunoff, I think to turn this down would, would be short-sighted. Um, and, and so, you know, I, I think this can provide tremendous benefit to our community in so many different regards. Um, and uh, it, it looks like you guys have really done good work in, in getting this ready. Um, so, um, with that said, there's one thing. I'm uncomfortable with the discussion we were having of bifurcating this site and looking at it as different sites um, to create a different zoning classification. So I think that's a dangerous precedent for us to get to say, hey, we're going to cut up this site and give this one zoning for something else. And so I'm not saying anybody said to do that, but, but there was discussion along that line. And, and I think we need to be thoughtful about that, okay? <laughs> with that said, um, you know, uh, I think that uh, I think we should move this forward. Uh, that's that's my opinion, and I think it would be a good thing for Plano. So, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Carey. Commissioner Ali. I think to Commissioner Carey's point, um, we are chattered, for lack of a better word, with making sure we preserve Plano's suburban suburban quality and its transition. Uh, to a more mature um, city in a very thoughtful manner. Um, Plano is very different from what it was 25 years ago. Uh, we have the Fortune 500s to prove it. Um, and a, a key component of the guiding principle for Plano 2050 is for this body to ensure that we balance both tensions as, as this city quite frankly, without our liking, moves 
in a certain direction that is um, very synonymous with the rest, rest of the world. Um, the residential component of this, you know, I struggled with until I read the priorities for the EM designation and it was maintaining land for employment generating uses and I cannot think of any more employment generating use than this particular proposal. Um, so I am very much in favor as having been one of those young cats who um, had to live in a sort of mixed use uh, having to live next to an employer while I do my practicum, mm -hmm. I appreciate the thought that I would have a place not too far away <laughs> to lay my head. So um, I am very much in um, favor of this proposal and uh, look forward to what, uh, what it becomes. Commissioner Ratliff. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I concur with everything that's been said. Um, but one of the one thing that really kind of solidifies my position on this is I think that this project with its adjacency to the UA district, and I'm not suggesting we would change the master plan, but I think as a preservation of the continuity of the district, the 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 uh, multifamily use across the street from existing multifamily use doesn't concern me um, as much as it might in other areas of town. And I think um, it is actually probably somewhat of a buffer um, and also an a, a enhancement of this development that they're talking about to help this development be more successful with that housing component. And so if I, if I look at it that way, and then I'm, uh, um, to Mr. Carey's point, I'm not suggesting we would change the plan, but if I look at it as if we were looking at a blank sheet of paper and say, would it make sense to have that as a UA versus EM? In this particular case, it does to me. It makes sense that that the UA adjacency could continue onto this property for the first 250 feet. That doesn't offend me at all. Uh, I don't think it compromises the suburban character of the 98% of Plano. Um, and so uh, I don't find that... Um, uh, a negative in any way, shape, or form. Um, the only part that, that I think staff brought up is the housing mix question. And, and so to my mind, that's, in my mind, that's the question of the findings form is the housing mix. And that's, if that's the only negative that I see in this whole proposal is the housing mix component in the legacy area in the EM, uh, that's, that's certainly not enough to change my mind. So with that said, I'm, I'm excited about this. I think it's a, a great reuse of this facility. I think the, the intensity that it will bring for employment and for new uh, corporate partners in our community and, and new residents of our community uh, is, a, is an exciting opportunity. So um, I'm very supportive. Commissioner Law. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve this and resurrect the God pod and vote for Frank with one stipulation that we would uh, have them take the two acres that's in yellow and make that a park, knowing that at some point in the future, if there is a need on the site, they could always come back. So you made a motion, but like only to, a motion to, to approve, but take the area that's shaded in yellow and make that part of the open space. Okay, so before we talk anymore, I just want to make sure we're clearing because at first it sounded like what you said was that they could use that for something else later. And I just want to be clear because what they're proposing is to keep it part of the open space until such time as they figure out what it is they want to use it for and then they would come back to us for approval on that. Is that something you're okay with or are you saying it needs to remain open space? Uh, open space you can always come back and ask i would just say let's i mean staff is recommending that we make it part of the open space now is my understanding and so my motion is intended to be in line with staff's recommendation 
but to give them the 30 feet on along Parkwood Boulevard that they say that they need for utilities and so forth. Okay, so basically your, your, your motion is to approve item 3A subject to retaining the uh, open space at 11 and a half acres instead of nine and a half acres. That's correct. 2A. Hmm? 2A. Uh, 2A, excuse me. I've moved ahead. Can I ask a question before you have a second? Is that allowed? Or do I need a second to ask a question? There should be a second before the discussion. Yeah. Uh, okay, then I'll, I'll... Well, let me ask if... Does anyone want to second that proposal, that motion? Because if we don't have a second for that motion, then we have to need find another motion. All right, so we don't have a second for your motion, Bill. That would fail, so you want to ask your question then let, without... Let me, let me ask a clarifying question, because if that lot if that area of the development is currently shown as open space on the ma on the site plan that is before us tonight mm -hmm. would that not require a revised site plan submittal to come before planning and zoning to do anything else with it Go ahead. It, it would require a site plan that's correct site it, plan it would not require it be preserved as open space so the applicant could use it for development but in order to use it for development, they would have to bring forward a site plan amendment for our review and approval. Correct, but if it meets the city's development regulations, you're obligated to approve it. Then it would be yeah, administrative. It would be administrative, not legislative. Right. Okay, well, that's kind of like what's happened with Collin Creek, where they've come back to us two or three times with revised. That's, so that's the, that would be the clarification, that it would be an administrative act. That's correct. Okay, okay. Which we that gives me some comfort. That, It'll be administrative, not legislative, which handcuffs us to some extent, but we s s could still speak into it. So it sounds, well, we couldn't get a second on the retaining it, as, <coughs> in other words, requiring them to have 11 and a half acres. So it didn't sound like everybody was really in favor of handcuffing them, right? Mr. Brunoff? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we approve item 2A. Second. Okay. We have, a, we have a motion to approve item 2A, pardon my faux pas earlier, by Commissioner Brunoff with a second by Commissioner Ratliff. Uh, please vote. Mr. Lyle, how do you vote? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so by a vote of six to zero, item 2A carries. I now need a vote or a motion on item 2B. Commissioner mm -hmm. Brunoff. Do we want to do? Just as long as we know that we're doing. We have to do the findings, yeah. Let's get 2B out of the way. That way they're good, and then we can do our business. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I move that item 2B be approved. So I have a motion by Commissioner Brunoff with a second by Commissioner Ratliff to approve item 2B. Please vote. Mr. Lyle? Yes. Okay, so item 2B also carries by a vote of six to zero. Thank you very much for your presentation tonight. Uh, we're gonna take a, a brief uh, break here. We have some business to take care of. Uh, on our findings forms. So if you need to take a little potty break or something, now's the time. <clears throat> All right.
playing <laughs> tag here. Um, we will reconvene now and move on to item 3A. I will read uh, three projects together since they coincide. Yes, please. Agenda item number 3A is a public hearing zoning case 2023-008, request for a specific use permit for vehicle storage on 2.7 acres located on the west side of Premier Drive, 600 feet south of Lexington Drive, zone corridor commercial. Petitioner is BTC Plano Rental Properties, LLC, that is for legislative consideration. Agenda item number 3B, public hearing, consent plan, Crest Cadillac Edition, Block B, Lot 1, vehicle storage on 2.7 acres located on the west side of Premier Drive, 1,660 feet north of Enterprise Drive, Zone Commercial Corridor. Applicant again is BTC, Plano Rental Properties, LLC. That particular item is administrative consideration. Final agenda item number 3C, public hearing preliminary site plan, Van Tile Edition, Block A, Lot 2, new vehicle dealer on one lot on 10.5 acres located on the west side of U.S. Highway 75, 1,660 feet north of Enterprise Drive, zone corridor commercial. Again, applicant, BTC Plano Rental Properties, LLC. This also is for administrative consideration. Good evening, Commissioners. I'm Parker McDowell, Planner with the P Planning Department. Uh, tonight, the applicant is requesting a specific use permit for vehicle storage on 2.7 acres. The property is currently zoned corridor commercial. Uh, the adjacent property to the north is zoned corridor commercial as well and developed with mini warehouse, public storage, electrical substation, and major vehicle repair. To the east of the small strip, is the electrical substation, also zone corridor commercial, and then across the street at Premier Drive, which is the preliminary site plan associated with this, is zone corridor commercial and a proposed new vehicle dealership. To the south, the property is zone corridor commercial and is currently a vacant parking lot. And then to the west, the property is zone single family residence six and developed with the single family homes in the Green Hollow neighborhood and a religious facility. The subject property is highlighted in yellow on the screen. On the screen is the zoning exhibit. And then this is the preliminary site plan showing the associated new vehicle dealership outlined in blue. The history in this project, previously the subject property was used as an off-site parking lot associated with the Crest Auto Park a five lot development focused on vehicle related uses, including the vehicle dealership, vehicle repair, and vehicle storage. Based on historic aerials, the site was used as vehicle storage until 2017. And since the SUP for vehicle storage, or since the vehicle storage was initially abandoned in 2017, the applicant must request this SUP to re establish the vehicle storage as a legal use on this property. There is an encroachment from the property to the north as shown in the image. Along the northwestern portion of the slot, a section of the mini warehouse to the north encroaches on the northern boundary of the subject property and includes pavement, fencing, and existing open storage. The applicant has committed to working with the neighboring property owner to either modify the property boundaries and remove the area with the encroachment or remove the improvements. The proposed SUP boundary does not include the area of encroachment. This subject property is located in the expressway corridor, corridor categories of the future land use map. Staff finds the proposed use of vehicle storage in this existing lot is having a neutral impact on the overall expressway category. This request would provide industrial type as defined by the comprehensive plan. As proposed in the associated concept plan, the request would comply with the recommended mix of uses for the expressway corridor dashboard. On screen is the comprehensive plan policy summary. Considering the, site, the site's historical use, its relationship to the adjacent auto dealership and the general site improvements proposed by the applicant, staff finds this proposed use of vehicle storage as having a neutral impact on the overall expressway corridor category. Staff received two letters of opposition within the 200 foot buffer. 
citywide staff received two, response, or two responses in support, four neutral, 10 opposed, 16 unique responses. Of, of those 16 unique responses, we also received three duplicate responses for a total of 19 responses. So staff recommends this item for approval as submitted. And I would also like to note that items 3B and 3C are contingent on approval of this item, and I'll quickly go through those. So this is the concept plan associated with this SUP request, as shown on screen. And this is the preliminary site plan, the Van Tile Edition Block A Lot 2, which is the new vehicle dealer component associated with this. And I believe the applicant is here at the presentation, but in the meantime, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Questions for staff? Preliminary. Mr. Ali was first. The previous use that was abandoned in 2017, if that use was not um, abandoned by the previous owner, what would have happened to this? This would have been grandfathered in? Uh, yes, if it was continued uses and not abandoned for more than two years, I believe is the time frame, two then years. they could be, still be used as vehicle storage without the SUP, if it was maintained. The residential area that is to the west of this um, property, when was that built? Do, do we know? I do not know the top of my head when it was built, but I believe it was existing when this uh, vehicle storage came in. So prior to 2017? Yes, correct. Commissioner Brunoff. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, can you tell me what the uh, the long, narrow strip uh, proceeding north from the uh, property <coughs> is for? Um, I believe that was just left over from how it was subdivided, and they're currently not proposing any development on there, so it's just to be remained undeveloped, that right. narrow strip. It's not intended as a driveway, for example? Correct. Okay. Is there any sort of buffering being proposed um, to screen off the residential properties to the west? Uh, there currently exists a masonry wall between that runs along the entire property line between the residential and this. Uh, how tall is the wall? I believe it is six feet tall. Okay. Is there any vegetation along the um, wall? When I went out there, I believe there is some, and the applicant is proposing uh, where the parking lot will actually be installed, additional landscaping. Okay. Or landscaping area. Does the uh, proposal? contemplate uh, paving owner over any areas that are not currently already paved over? Um, I do not believe so. I believe when I went out to the site, it currently exists as a parking lot. And from what I've seen, uh, they're actually proposing additional landscape islands that do not exist there today. OK, but do you, do you see that this would create any additional drainage issues that uh, uh, over and above the present condition of the property? Uh, I did ask our engineering department if they see any issues or are aware of any issues. They are currently not aware of any drainage issues. Mm -hmm. And they said that when it gets farther along in the process and they submit more construction documents, they will review that and make sure that any changes does not adversely affect neighboring properties. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Kerry. Yeah, um, one of the things you mentioned was that they were going to resolve this encroachment. And um, I don't know, maybe this is a, probably a question for, really for the applicant, but um, what happens if they cannot resolve that, if they, they can't come to agreement? Um, then since they legally own that land and it was built on their property, they could work with our property standards division to help get that removed from their property. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Bernoff, did you have another question? Or? Okay, very good. Commissioner Hill, Chair Hill, Mr. Hill. I just wanted to clarify something that Mr. McDowell said. Non-conforming uses, they do expire after six months. I think he mentioned six two months. years, but it's six months. So for all you people with SUPs, just keep that in mind. Six months, and you're out of here. All right. It's getting late. I apologize. Mr. Ratliff. Clarification. You said non-conforming use versus SUP. SUPs expire after six months? No, so sir. Is this a conforming use under the current zoning? Is this an allowable use? No. They're, they're seeking the SUP, which, if granted, runs with the land uh, until it is rescinded. So that would be permanent. The previous use, it was previously used for 
storage and, and, and that sort of thing, that, ex that was not allowed, but it was able to continue because it was operating on the property. Okay. I just wanted to clarify, make sure I heard that right. Okay, thanks. Good clarification. Okay. Thank you. Chairman. Oh, Mr. Law. Yes, sir. Hello. I would, I, I, I drove out to this site. The brick wall has got some deterioration going on. Uh, there's, we've seen lots of different sites that had screening or didn't have screening. I realize this masonry wall is there. Is there a way to require, I mean, this is, this is an area that really makes sense to me to provide a green screen in addition to the wall. They're already planning some additional landscaping out there. Is that, it's not for a lot of linear footage. It seems to me like it's a way to uh, attempt to give the folks the use that they're asking for. And then also, um, I mean, the neighbors are right on the side of the, uh, the other side of the six foot wall and the, the homes are elevated. So if there's a way to add landscaping along that wall or some trees, I, I think that would go a long way towards the neighborhood. Okay. Um, we'll keep that in mind. So that's not a question for staff. You're just suggesting that as a something for us to consider. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any more questions? All right. I'm going to open the public hearing. Thank you. You said the applicants here. We do. We have Judd Melanex, John Hardy, and Rick Palmer. Good evening. Give us your name and address. Good evening. Uh, Judd Mullenix with Kinley Horn. It's 13455 Noel Drive in Dallas, Texas. And I'm here representing the owner and applicant and uh, the developer of the property. Um, do we have that present? We do. Okay. So um, I'll go to the first slide here. So as you can see on your screen, um, we have this SUP request on the left side there. It's approximately 2.7 acres. As mentioned by Parker, this site has previously been a vehicle storage directly related to the vehicle operator that was over to the east. Um, the same use is being proposed here as vehicle storage directly related to the new operator that's to the east. And as you can see in the bottom left there, it's going to be a Tesla dealership. So um, 60,000 square feet of sales, service, and delivery on the, on the east side of uh, Premier. This is a brief uh, landscape. We, we, we have added landscaping all within this parking lot that we're talking about for the SUP. So none of the existing islands exist there today. It is fully paved, no landscape islands. For the vehicle storage, I don't believe landscape islands are required, but we are adding them in addition to the trees and the, uh, the landscaping that's there. You'll also see that um, pursuant to the request of landscaping adjacent to the neighbors, we've added trees there as well. Um, so we're adding some additional landscape and buffering there on the back side directly adjacent to where those neighbors are. And this is just a few um, uh, slides of what the dealership is gonna look like. And these two, as mentioned by Parker, are directly tied together. Um, so it's a it's it's use to the to the west that is specifically for this this auto dealership. So, um, any questions? Additional questions I can answer. Um, let's see if we have other speakers, and then we'll we'll circle back. So, we do not, other than the applicants. Oh, okay. So, um, if that's it, then I think we'll go ahead and ask you some questions. If you want to come back up, sorry. That's assuming I don't see any buttons lit up yet, but I'm assuming they will any second now or not. Um, so uh, I can count on Mr. Brunoff. Yes, sir. I was waiting to see if anybody else wanted to go. Ahead, you're very polite. Okay. I appreciate Thank that. You. Go ahead. Um, there seems to be a little boundary dispute at the far end of that uh, little narrow passage that extends northward. Mm -hmm. um, what is the status of uh, your dealings with the adjacent property owner to try to resolve that? So the current owner of the property actually met with that owner about two weeks ago, and they currently are amenable to our current plan and also to just removing their improvements entirely. So we're working with them on what makes the most sense um, for this project. 
we have both options on the table to either replat and to put the property, put their encumbrances on them so it's not in our property anymore, mm -hmm. or to have it removed. Um, so it's kind of, we're going to work with them on what makes the most sense for their operation. And Well, which and, is, I mean, have you reached a decision as, as to which way you're going to go? Not yet. We haven't, no. Um, okay. Um, we did have a written opposition from the adjacent property owner. He was under the impression that you were planning to have people encroach across his property for, to, for access to, to this property, some sort of driveway across his property. Do, do you know anything about that? Because I don't see any driveways other than those two that, that uh, enter the property off of Premier. Parker, how do I take it back to the PSP? I can show you what he's talking about. Right there. Yeah. Um, that, 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 that was, that there you go. Was good. That's yeah. it. So yeah. if you'll see to the top right of the screen, there is um, a drive internal to the site that angles directly to the north. And so I think the property owner that sent that letter in is the owner directly to our north of the large parcel, not of the small skinny piece. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so um, the city has required us to provide a access easement for cross access there, so we have provided that cross access easement to the property line that aligns with our current fire lane drive, but we have cut our paving about 10 feet from there. So there will be an access easement there for cross access in the future, mm -hmm. should the property to the north want to utilize that cross access, mm -hmm. but we're not, sorry, we're not building a drive to that, and we're not gonna encroach on his property for any access. Okay, have either you or your or the owner that you represent haven't have had discussions with the other owner about that? No, that is a city of Plano engineering and planning requirement. So we didn't necessarily want to do it, but it's something that was required by the city. Is there any obstruction to that access at the moment, like, like improvements on the other property? I think they, have, they currently have a parking lot that's operating without any sort of access here. So as it sits today, they would not be able to use it. This would only be beneficial if a new owner or if the current owner decided to restructure their parking lot and take advantage of that new access easement and then add a driveway to theirs, then they'd have the ability to punch through there and, and gain access to yeah. our drive connection. But you do have two uncontested driveway entrances off of Pre Premier, do you not? Correct. And okay. Yeah, we don't, we don't need the access at all. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Commissioner Allen. Uh, one question along the good neighbor line. Um, one of the comments in opposition was something to do with uh, an erosion issue for this individual's property. Are you aware of that? Um, so we were made aware of it by the, um, the letter that was brought up, um, I think, at the end of the week last week. And I think the neighbor is on the screen here to the top left. So there's an existing City of Plano 15-foot drainage easement up there. So the drainage goes up to an inlet and then it cuts and goes back to the west. I think there's an outfall there as well. Um, so I've already talked with the owner and, and my client about that, and we will um, work with engineering and staff to create some sort of improvement there. Um, as shown on the landscape, we are reducing the cover, the impervious cover on this site, so we're going to be reducing the flow going to that point. So already making the situation better than it is today, but we'll work with them on some erosion measures there to, to help improve that and ensure there's not any future issues. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Thank you. All right, close the public hearing. Find discussions to the commission. Mr. Ratliff. Make a motion we approve item 3A as presented. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Ratliff with a second by Mr. Brunoff to approve item 3A as submitted. Please vote. Mr. Lyle? Yes. That item carries six to zero. Need a motion on 3B? Uh, oh, Bill, you go. Hey, excuse me. I don't mean to interrupt. Was I supposed to walk down with him to say something since my name was called? Or was I was waiting for my name to be called to see if I oh. had something to say? Can you state your name? Rick Palmer. Yes, I, I called. I called you. I'm sorry if you Did didn't I need hear. To come when you called or when yes, you called? <laughs> sorry. All right, so we've, we've closed the public hearing on 
on this, but if you have something specific to say. I, was, I am the property owner to the north. Okay. I, I would say come down then and let's, let's hear what you have to say. Okay. I'm Rick Palmer. I own Innovative Auto Works, which is a property to the north of their storage lot on Premier Drive. We have been here since 1997. We saw it as Crest Cadillac storage lot. Uh, now seeing what they want to do there, I think it is great. I think what they want to do is fine. The only questions I had was on the driveway. I didn't see, or the picture that you have is very small compared to the printout off of the Plano website where it looks like they want to move their driveways down close to my driveway. Uh, and then that proposed driveway connection was another question that I think he answered very well. Uh, so the only thing that I would question now is the entrance to that property is now close to the middle of the property. It doesn't impede or get in the way of anything. And I see in the picture that they want to bring it down close to my driveway. Uh, we only house about 20 cars in the front of the lot. We stay about 10 cars behind during the day, so we have a lot of traffic in and out. Sometimes we need the wreckers to stop out front and drop off cars so we can get them in the parking lot. And it looks like it's going to be very close to being able to get a wrecker between their new proposed entryway and our driveway. So uh, that was my only concern. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Palmer. I, I think that's something you'll probably want to work through with the property owner. Um, typically, we don't use the right of way for, uh, you know, lo loading, unloading with record services. I, I know that's a very active street for auto uses, so I'm, I'm sure that's what you've done for a while. So uh, just be aware um, if it's possible for you to take that off street. I think that's what the city would ask you to do. Um, and there are challenges with doing that in the street. And, you know, the driveway as proposed does meet the city's standards so there's a minimum dimension between their driveway and yours okay. it does meet the city's requirements so i just want to caution you about doing those operations in the street you guys have been very good to us since we've been here it was just a concern that uh, we might have problem with somebody wanting to get in wanting to get out even of their property also where it may have to wait to, to uh, inconvenience of an unloading or loading. Uh, so that, that's all I was. Thank you. I, I, I took your letter to mean that you were worried that their unloading and loading was going to block your driveway. It sounds like what you're saying is that you're worried that their driveway is going to prevent you from being able to load or unload in the street. Could be very congested, yes. Yeah. Okay. Could be for them, too, if they have cars, because they yeah. Crest has been there for years. Uh, and that is where they park their uh, big unloading trucks. And on the street? Moved, yes, on the street, and then moved them into the lot, mm, okay. uh, which makes the driveway where it is now very nice because there's nothing of across the street from it. Understood. Crest Body Shop also has a driveway entry that they don't use right across the street from where this one's proposed also. Okay, thank so, you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I guess I should ask, is there anyone else that wants to speak on this item? I had called John Hardy. Uh, sorry, I, I registered as a speaker, but I was meaning to just answer questions if there were any. Very good, thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, so we're back to item 3B. Mr. Ali. I move we approve item 3B as submitted. Second. So I have a motion by Commissioner Ali with a second by Commissioner Ratliff to approve item 3B as submitted. Um, approve. Thank you, Mr. Lyle. And she didn't catch my vote, but it would be approved as well. Do we need to modify that subject to council approving zoning case 3A or the other? That would be more appropriate. I agree. Yeah. So we're going we're gonna to redo this so that we get it right. Commissioner Ali. 
I move we approve item 3B subject to council, city council approval of zoning case 23-008. Thank you. Approve. I'll take Mr. Lyle's approve as a second, although I guess I heard Mr. Brunoff say second. So motion by Commissioner Ali, second by Commissioner Brunoff to approve item 3B. Please vote. And that carries six to zero. So now we can go to 3C, a little more straightforward. Move approval as submitted of item 3C. Second. Motion by Commissioner Ratliff, second by Commissioner Brunoff, item 3C. Please vote. Mr. Lyle. Approved. Six zero, thank you. That item is carried. We'll try to get on a roll here, folks. Item four. Agenda item number four, public hearing zoning case 2023-010, request to amend the zoning ordinance regarding adopting a broadly applicable process for making determinations of status as a non-conforming use or structure and for appealing those determinations. Petitioner is City of Plano. This is for legislative consideration. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Melissa Kleinick, lead planner with the planning department. This is a request to amend the zoning ordinance regarding determinations of nonconformities. The commission called a public hearing on May 15th of 2023 to consider amending the zoning ordinance regarding adopting a broadly applicable process for making determinations of status as a nonconforming use or structure and for appealing such determinations. This request results from changes to state law which define these formal processes. Plano's current regulations for nonconformities specify three instances in which a nonconformity shall exist. However, there is no defined process for staff to review and determine that one of these instances applies to a use or structure. Typical current practice is for staff to research the history of a site, including site plans and certificates of occupancy. <laughs> Additionally, an applicant may also be requested to provide records of operation on site. Changes to state law, specifically Senate Bill 929, have provided a framework for a more standardized process for determining nonconformities. A municipality must now provide a formal determination of nonconforming status. If an applicant disagrees with the determination, the applicant may appeal the decision to the Board of Adjustment. The proposed changes establish the current typical practice for determining a non-conforming use or structure into a formal process, as well as allow this determination to be appealed to the Board of Adjustment in compliance with state law. Staff is also proposing new language be added to the Zoning Ordinance's Board of Adjustment Appeal section to be consistent with the language and timeframes established in Chapter 211 of Texas Local Government Code. The proposed request is in conformance with the guiding principles, land use action one and property standards action nine of the comprehensive plan. As these amendments are in conformance with the comprehensive plan and will create a clear standardized process for both staff and applicants to follow, staff is recommending this for approval as shown by the strike through and underlined text in the staff report. And there were no responses received for this item and I can answer any questions. Okay, thank you very much. Um, quick sidebar here, I'm gonna let our wonderful attorney give us just a slight correction, go ahead. So I just wanted to point out that, that the 929 connection here is that 929 makes it so we have a specific process for terminating non-conforming uses. Um, one of the reasons why we have to do this now is because we are working towards short-term rental registration and we have an interim ban on short-term rentals. Because of that, we need to be able to determine who's a non-conforming use and set up a process for them to appeal. So although we're gonna be coming back later with 929 corrections to these ordinances, this is primarily about just being able to determine what's non-conforming. Okay. Um, it's broader than short-term rentals, but it isn't quite as tied to 929, so I just wanted to make that quick correction. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And it's common for those that haven't been on the commission uh, 
long enough to have experienced it. Every two years, the legislation meets and they pass bills, laws, whatever, and then we have to update our ordinances to comply. So this is the front end of probably a little bit of a trickle of adoption of changes we may have to make to our ordinance to comply with state law. So, all right, uh, this is a public hearing item. I will open the public hearing. Do we have any speakers on this item? No, we do not. All right, thank you. I will close the public hearing. Thank you very much. Mr. Bruno. Uh, Mr. Chairman, it sounds like this is a necessary process. It also affords uh, both the city, the city and property owners with a, with a due process to make determinations, and therefore I think it's appropriate. I'm, I make a motion that we approve item number four. Uh, second the motion. I think we, uh, citizenry, developers, and whoever wants to leave work or play in Plano deserves clarity on, from a process perspective, perspective. So I second that motion. Thank you. So I have a motion by Commissioner Bruno. Oh, Commissioner Kerry, you have a comment. I, I have a question, really. Okay. Um, on um, 5.200.1, um, this talks about who has the final decision making authority. And I, I'm just curious who that actually is. Um, if we could get a little clarity around that, just as we look at what this process is going to be. So who will that be? Because it seems to stipulate that one person would be making these decisions. Am I reading that correctly? Sorry, so 5.2. It's on page 3 of 5 on, on this particular document. Subsection 52001. Yeah, point one, point one. appeal, under appeals. Yes, so that's where it defines the administrative officer. So the administrative officer. I think the, the language used to be um, just the building official, and this broadens it to also include the planning director um, in, in the case of nonconformities, but or, or designee um, as appropriate. Okay. So it, it may vary based on um, what type of appeal is being requested. <clears throat> Yeah, well, thanks. I was just curious how narrow that decision-making may be and what what that might create for us. Okay, thank you very much. Chairman? Yes, sir. Mr. Law? I just wanted to ask staff, or Michelle, I'm not sure who to address the question to. We'll just say staff for now, and then if Michelle needs to answer. But let's say that there's a city-initiated zoning that makes specific uses non-conforming is this a situation where someone like the, the the city would come in and sundown a use and say you need to stop and and give up your land rights? So actually, you're kind of jumping ahead to what's going to come second in a in a different ordinance. Nine twenty nine is about that. I think you called it a sundown process. We usually call it an amortization sunset. Sun, sunset. Okay, sunset okay. Um, or amortization. There you, go. you know, that's in 929. We're not doing that tonight. That's going to come in another change to some of these same sections. And we'll do that. We'll bring that to you later with all a bunch of other legislative required changes. We split it into two because this one this change arose out of the, the need to deal with non-conforming uses for short-term rentals. And from your comments earlier, I understand this to create a consistent process, but is there a consistent process on how these uses would be amortized or is that gonna just be up to the officials that are named as responsible for making the determination? Um, 929 requires a consistent process and spells out, um, you know, in, in quite a bit of detail how that process works. And we didn't have that process in our ordinance at all. Um, so it's going to be all new language. And how will this affect non-conforming uses that exist before we make all these changes? So non-conforming uses now... There was no process spelled out to get a formal determination. So people could ask the planning department and planning department could give them an opinion. 
but we didn't have the formal process that said, okay, um, first you check with these people, then you go to the planning director, and then if you don't like that, you go to the board of adjustment. So now we have a full robust process with appeals and, and all of that, whereas before it would have just been informal, you know, working with the department to determine whether you had a non-conforming use or not. But this shouldn't really affect the outcome. No, it, right, no, it's all an, process. It's right. not, it, it doesn't change anybody's current non-conforming uses or anything like that. It just gives them a process to figure out how, whether their property is non-conforming or not. Well, I can think of non-conforming uses that exist today. Are they now gonna be subject to this new legislation? Or are they somehow exempted even by the non-conforming language? Because when they became non-conforming, none of this language existed at all. It, it won't change anybody's status. You, you were either non-conforming before or you weren't non-conforming. This just sets the process going forward that the city will use anytime somebody asks if they're non-conforming or if we go through an enforcement procedure and they raise the defense of non-conforming use, um, you know, and, and want to go through an administrative process, this is what they do. But there's, there's nothing about it that changes anybody's situation, legal status at all. But my understanding today is that if you have a use on a property and you establish that use legally, and then for whatever reason the zoning changed and you become a non-conforming use you have rights in perpetuity as long as you don't cease that use does this somehow give the city a way to come in and say you've been non-conforming for five years and we're going to give you another two years and then you need to be done no but no this language will not do that this language does not have anything about amortization or um, sunsetting in it. 929 has language about that, that we're gonna be addressing in a future ordinance, but we'll be doing it only as required by statute. The city won't be imposing anything that the state hasn't already imposed. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's circle back. I believe we had a motion and a, second. and a second. And was that captured appropriately? Okay. Uh, please vote. Mr. Lyle? Approved. And that item carries 6 0. Item 5. Agenda item number five public hearing replat American First National Bank edition block A lot one bank on one lot on 1.0 acre located on the east side of K Avenue 124 feet north of 19th Street zone plan development 26 light commercial applicant is American First National Bank this is for administrative consideration. Plano TV, can you change the slide to slide 104, please? Thank you. This replot is recommended for approval as submitted, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Any questions for staff on this item? No. What is the purpose of this replot? This replot is dedicating right of way on the west side of the property adjacent to K Avenue. Dedicating it to who? Dedicating to the city. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Any more questions for staff? None. All right. It's a public hearing. Do we have any speakers? Uh, the applicant is available to answer any questions from the commission. Do we have any questions for the applicant? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Commissioner Carey. I'll make a motion to approve as submitted. Second. All right, so we have a motion by Commissioner Carey with a second by Commissioner Ratliff to approve item five as submitted. Please vote. Approved. That item carries 6 0.
There's still a whole lot of people in here. Thank you for your patience. It's a long night. A agenda item number six, public hearing, replat and revised site plan, Plano Chisholm edition, block A, lots one and two. Professional General Administrative Office on Lot 1 and Restaurant, Retail, and Medical Office on Lot 2 on 4.3 acres located on the south side of Chisholm Place, 205 feet west of U.S. Highway 75, zone corridor commercial with specific use permits, number 187 for restaurant and number 324 for private club. Applicant is Rig Chisholm Place, LLC, and Elam Townhomes, LLC. This is for administrative consideration. Both the revised site plan and the replat are recommended for approval as submitted, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Do we have any questions for staff on this item? Commissioner Carey. What is a private club here? Private club is also known as a bar. Uh-huh. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Ali. Uh, just a quick question. It says this property is located in uh, an approximate flood zone. Am I reading that correctly? Are we paving over parts of the flood zone for the parking? There is a um, flood zone on the south portion of lot one. That's quite a ways away from, from... No parking proposed gotcha. there. Okay, thank you. It's right along that creek. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Public hearing. Do we have any speakers on this item? No, we do not. All right. Thank you. I'll close the public hearing. Commission? I make a motion. We approve item um, six. six, including the replat and the revised site plan. As submitted. I'll second. All right. Motion by Commissioner Brunoff, second by Commissioner Carey to approve item six. As submitted, please vote. Commissioner Law. Approved. 6 0, that carries. Item 7. Agenda item number 7 is a replat. West Park Preston Edition, Block A, Light 3R. Bank and Retail on one lot on 2.2 acres located at the northwest corner of Preston Road and Park Boulevard. Zone Plan Development 68 Retail and located within the Preston Road Overlay District. Applicant is MC West Park, LLC. This is for administrative consideration. This replat is recommended for approval as submitted, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Any questions for staff on this item? All right. Seeing none, I'll open the public hearing. Thank you. Any speakers on this item? Uh, the applicant is available to answer any questions from the commission. Does the commission have any questions for the applicant? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Find discussion to the commission. Make a motion we approve item number seven as submitted. Second. Motion by Commissioner Ratliff with a second by Commissioner Ali to approve item seven as submitted. Please vote. Approved. And that item carries six to zero. Item eight. Agenda item number eight, public hearing replats and revised site plan. Willow Bend Polo Estates, phase B, block B, lot 6R, 11R, and 14R. Three patio home lots on 0.4 acre located on the west side of Old Westbury Lane, 435 feet north of Turtle Creek Drive. Zone plan development, 423 patio home. Applicant is Shaddock WBP Plano LLC. This is for administrative consideration. Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the commission. I'm Raha Fuladi, the planner with the planning department. Staff recommends approval of uh, three replats and one revised site plan. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Any questions for staff on this item? Commissioner Ali? Uh, just quick. Oh, uh, sorry. Yeah, so this has been interesting since... This one keeps surfacing. Um, what, what's the reason for the changes here? Because again, we've had some uh, citizens down on the south end of this that have been concerned about uh, flooding. So I'm curious what, what this replats about. Um, so the um, zoning for this area uh, allows the um, building setback to be modified. Um, if the uh, total area um, of the setback is, remains the same. 
and so long as they maintain the minimum 10 foot uh, front yard setback as well. Um, the uh, builders are proposing a unique um, building layout that has a middle courtyard essentially. Uh, so instead of having uh, a 20 foot uh, front yard setback, they're allowed to go up to a 10 foot uh, front yard setback, but they're adding a setback to the rear and to the side. Okay, thank you. Sure. Commissioner Ali. Nope, we're good. Okay, any other questions for staff? Thank you. The public hearing. Wait, have any speakers? No, we do not. Thank you. I'll close the public hearing. Thank you. Commissioner? Mr. Chairman, I move we approve uh, item eight, including replats and revised site plan as submitted. Motion by Commissioner Brunoff with a second by Commissioner Ali to approve item eight as submitted. Please vote. Commissioner approved. Ali. Thank you, Commissioner Lyles. That item carries 6 0. Appreciate you being quick there, Bill. You're, you're ready to move on, I can tell. Agenda item number nine public hearing replat, St. Andrew edition, block one, lot 2R. Religious facility on one lot on 21.2 acres located at the northwest corner of Plano Parkway and Mira Vista Boulevard. Zone plan development 52 single family residence 7. Applicant is St. Andrew's United Methodist Church. This is for administrative consideration. Thank you, Ms. Bridges. Staff recommends approval of the replat as submitted. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Sure. Questions for staff on this item? <coughs> Seeing none, thank you. I'll open the public hearing. Do we have any speakers on this item? Uh, we do. Uh, we have the applicant and the uh, applicant re representative here to answer questions from the commission. Okay. Do we have any questions for the applicant on this item? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing. Make a motion we approve item nine as submitted. So I have a motion by Commissioner Ratliff with a second by Commissioner Carey to approve item nine as submitted. Please vote. Approve. That item carries six to zero. Item 10. Agenda item number 10, public hearing, preliminary replat and revised site plan, Alcatel USA edition, block A, lot 6R. Professional General Administrative Office located on one lot on 18.7 acres located at the northwest corner of Independence Parkway and Lotus Drive. Zone Plan Development 381 Retail General Office and located within the 190 Tollway Plano Parkway Overlay District. Applicant is Independence Plano BTS LLC. This is for administrative consideration. The preliminary replat is recommended uh, for approval subject to uh, additions and or alterations as required by the engineering department. And the revised site plan is recommended as uh, for approval as submitted. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Any questions for staff on this item? Seeing none, thank you. I'll open the public hearing. Do we have speakers on this item? No, we do not. Thank you. I'll close the public hearing. Confine discussion to the commission. Mr. No. Chairman, I move we approve agenda item number 10, prelim preliminary replat subject to additions and or alterations to the engineering plans as required by the engineering department and also the revised site plan uh, recommended for approval as submitted. Second. So I have a motion by Commissioner Ali with a second by Commissioner Ratliff to approve item 10 based on staff recommendations. Please vote. Approve. That item carries six to, thank you, Mr. Law. That item carries six to zero. Item 11. Well, wow, you guys drew the unlucky number, I guess. Are you 12? <laughs> Agenda item number 11, wow. public hearing, preliminary replant, and revised Sorry. site plan. Huff finds Plano Properties Edition, block one, lots one through three. New and used vehicle dealer on three lots on 10.9 acres located at the northwest corner of Plano Parkway and Coit Road. Zoned light industrial one and located within the 190 Tollway Plano Parkway Overlay District. Applicant is Huffines Plano Properties LP. This is for administrative consideration. 
Staff recommends the preliminary replat for approval subject to additions and or alterations to the engineering plans as required by the engineering department and the revised site plan is recommended for approval as submitted. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Do we have questions for staff on this item? I do. Mr. Carey. Yeah, I'm curious uh, why they're dividing the lot into one and two. Pardon? Can you repeat well, the question? I'm sorry. Um, why are they dividing the lot? Uh, because lot two, um, as shown on the revised site plan, is going to be a new proposed uh, dealership. So that building is not existing today. It is going to be created by this revised site plan. Great. Thank you. Mr. Rattler. A question also. On lot two, the parking and access easement, why did we put an access easement there, or easement there instead of just revising the lot line? Uh, the applicant is here to answer any questions, but I believe it's... Um, it how it was previously, so there it used to, it was existing as that kind of a parking and access easement. They're changing it to fit the new building, um, but it's used by the other lots, and they don't want to include that in the new lot. So that's being abandoned by this plat. Uh, partially abandoned. So if you look at this on the screen, you can see what's being abandoned, and then what's now going to replace it. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for staff? Okay. Thank you. I'll open the public hearing. Do we have any speakers? No, we do not. Okay. I'll close the public hearing. Commission? Mr. Chairman, I move we approve. What agenda item are we on? Number 11? 11. <laughs> Pre preliminary replat subject to additions and alterations to the engineering plans as required by the engineering department and also the revised site plan as submitted. Okay, so I have a motion by Commissioner Holly with a second by Commissioner Brunoff to approve item 11 as recommended by staff. Please vote. Approved. That item carries six to zero. Okay, guys, you didn't quite win the lottery, but here we go, item number 12. <laughs> Ag agenda item number 12, public hearing, preliminary replat, Legacy Corporate Center, Block A, Lot 7R, medical office on one lot on 1 1.9 acres, <laughs> located on the east side of Preston Road, 878 feet north of Legacy Drive, zone general office, and located within the Preston Road Overlay District, applicant is Schrerer 1 Limited. Administrative consideration. I promise this is the last item. <laughs> Staff recommends approval of the preliminary replat subject to additions and or alterations to the engineering plans as required by the engineering department. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. She's going, please, God, let there be no questions. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have any questions for staff? Oh, Mr. Ali has a question. I have one. All right. Sorry. And the simple question the easement is mainly for water, or is there a different purpose for the easement? I believe uh, they are proposing a medical office on this property, and this is the uh, plat for that property. So, two water easements, right? Stormwater conservation area. Mm hmm. Okay. We good? Anyone else? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'll open the public hearing. Do we have any speakers on this side? The applicant is available to answer questions from the commission. Who's the applicant? Woo, you win, dude. Okay. <laughs> Do we have a question for the applicant? Oh, Mr. Bruno. No, I'll bet the one thing the applicant does not want to hear at this point is a motion to, to postpone this matter for the future agenda. <laughs> so you don't actually have a question? No. Okay. I do have a motion, however, to approve this. Well, but let me open. Let me. <laughs> That's not right. <laughs> Close the public hearing. <laughs> now, Commissioner Brunoff. I make a motion we approve item number 12, um, subject to additions and or alterations to the engineering plan as required by the engineering department. And I will second. All right, so we have thankfully a motion by Commissioner Brunoff with a second by Commissioner Carey to approve item 12 based on staff recommendation. Please vote. Mr. Lyle. Approved. Okay, that item carries six to zero. Congratulations, sir. Thank you for your patience. 
you're going to hang out for a while longer just to see. <laughs> they turn the lights off in about five minutes, so I'm just Seats saying. Pretty comfortable. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I'm not even sure. Item 13. Items for future agendas. Does anybody want to stretch out a future meeting by adding another topic? <laughs> no. Okay. Okay. We are adjourned at 945. Good night.